Dear students, welcome to the fifth video. In this video, I am going to start something new. Uh, and this new thing that I am going to start is related to, the, to what we took last time. In what sense it, it is related? Uh, you remember when we talked about uh, uh, main properties of language, we said that langu human language has a number of properties. And these properties make it difficult for animals to learn what human language. Okay, I don't want to repeat these things because I think I have talked about, uh, I mean, earlier. Now, but, but in what sense that this chapter, which I am going to start with, is related to uh, what? To the main properties of language. Th it is related in the sense that you remember when we talked about, uh, when we talked about what? We talked about productivity. You remember this P-R-O-D-U-C-T-I-V-I-T-Y, productivity. Now we said that productivity, <coughs> productivity means that human language um, can produce or uh, new words into language. New, uh, new uh, vocabularies, new words, come into language because man because man needs or man create things or man comes across new objects then he has to use words for these things that he has that he comes across okay right now uh, because of this the man or human language helps man to create what? A new vocabularies, a new words. Right. We said that animal communication or animals cannot add what? A new terms, a new signals. They cannot as, uh, as uh, humans can. So now, I don't want to, uh, uh, I mean, talk more, but I, I want to uh, make a bridge, you know, making a bridge between what I am going to talk about now and uh, uh, what and the this property, which is called what? Productivity. Productivity, adding new words, new terms, right. Now, how is language or how does a hu uh, human uh, languages or languages, human languages, how do they increase their vocabularies? How do they add new, voca new vocabularies? Now, they add them by a number of processes. The process of adding new words into the language, we call it what? Productivity. Now, this, uh, now aspects of productivity, aspect, forms of productivity, or these aspects can be uh, uh, are called uh, what well, are called word formation processes. Now, what do we mean by word? Let's see here, word formation. Teshkil al kalima, amaliyat teshkil al kalima, taqwin al kalima. Now, how do we create new words? Right. Now, there are a number of what a number of processes. Now, these processes are almost uh, they are used. They are commonly used by what? By human languages in order to increase their vocabularies. Right. Now, these, vocabula uh, these processes that I am going to talk about, now, they vary from one language into another language. Maybe th this language uses this process more than what? More than that language. That language does not use this process as much as this language, uh, this language what uses what, this process. So 
they, they vary, but almost they all use what these processes. Then where is the difference? The difference is in, in this language uses what this process more than what that language. This, this is the variation in what uh, among languages. Uh, 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 in general, uh, uh, in general or generally speaking, now all languages use what these processes, right? Okay. <clears throat> now, um, now these uh, now uh, these processes or word formation processes, these processes they give us new words. These new words are called neologisms. Neologisms. Neologism, or just let me uh, delete this S, neologism. Neologism, neo means new. And logism, logism means speech, new speech, new speech, new speech, um, R, new utterance, A U double T E R A N C. So now, this chapter, this chapter talks about how languages produce what uh, new words. Now, these new words that they produce, either either they take it from other languages, they 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 manip manipulation of language. The, the, as we will see, as we will see now, what each what what each process what. Uh, uh, does I mean uh, how does uh, what uh, a language what an increase uh, uh, what uh, its vocabularies a number of processes each process has its own feature or uh, as its uh, uh, yeah its feature or its characteristics I mean the content of this uh, process is or what this process does it differs differs not totally differs, but we, as we will see uh, later on, but they are, sometimes they are different, sometimes they are related in a way or what another. Right, so now, uh, neologism means new speech. This is a form of new, 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 and N-E-O means new. Logism means a speech. Or utterances, or let's say what a word. So uh, now, when we add a new word into a new speech, new utterance, new word into language, this is an uh, this is where do we put this under? We put it under what productivity, which we earlier said that how human language can or humans speakers of a language can create new words when they come across what new object or what new things now another another term for the word for the word neologism is the word coinage coinage coin coinage 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 coin coin coinage coinage uh, uh, in Arabic, coinage, coinage, in Arabic means sekil umle. This is one of the meanings of coinage. Coin mana sekil umle, coin umle, which is made of uh, metal. Okay, but here in linguistics we use coinage to mean creating new words, adding new words into what into language. Now, the question raised here is why do we need to uh, increase uh, or add new words into language? In addition to what I said that, uh, just now, that when we face new things, new object, new situation, we want to describe that situation, then we need to create, we need new words for that situation. Right. Now, what is the other reason? What is the other reason for 
adding a new word, creating a new word. Here also, here in neuro neologism, new except adding a new word, creating. There is the what we call creation of a new word. Just like when they create a new, for example, a new thing. They created the or they invented the TV, they invented the radio, they invented the internet. Also here in linguistic coinage, it means creating a new word. So here in linguistics, we are dealing with a creation, but what sort of a creation? Creation of what? New word or creation of words. See here. This is a very uh, creation of words. We are dealing with a creation of what? Of words. Okay? Creation of inventing a new word, creating a new word. How do we create a new word? We need a new word. Now, as I said that we need to create a new word because words in a language, in any language, some words become obsolete, become outdated, outdated, or are cake or obsolete obsolete okay yes <coughs> um, right outdated outdated yeah what does it mean outdated or obsolete uh, archaic they, they are no longer used let me give you an example um, now nowadays nowadays we do not say the word typewriter, typewriter, typewriter. Nowadays, we do not use the word typewriter. Why? Because the word typewriter, the, 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 the machine or that, that machine or that equipment has, is no longer used. So we do not use what? Typewriter. Earlier, before the invention of the internet, the keyboard, all these things, they, people use, how do they type? They type by using what? Typewriter. Then, because nowadays we do not use a typewriter, so the word typewriter is no longer what? Used. Okay? Typewriter. Sorry. Typewriter. So, see now, because we do not use a word, because we do not use a word, that that word becomes what? Obsolete. Tasbah qadime. Archaic. Outdated. Yeah, it is no longer used. Now, it becomes dead. Dead. No longer used. It becomes dead. Nobody uses it. So now, with the passage of time, with the passage of time, <coughs> sorry, with the passage of time, now, uh, uh, words become what? Obsolete, or they become what? Archaic, okay? Or they become outdated. So what do we do here when we have words are become obsolete? We have to compensate these words. We have to add the new words so that in order to make language, because this is an aspect of vitality, Language has to be a, a, a living language. These, this is one of the features of what uh, living languages, where new, when they have outdated or archaic or obsolete words, they add a new words in it, just like this. Because with the passage of time, unless we add words into language, one day we get up and then we find that we do not have words. Because they have words have become what? Dead or archaic or obsolete. So what do we do? So in order to keep this living feature of language, Hayawi vitality of language, we have to add what new new words or new what vocabularies. Now um, uh, so now this chapter, after this introduction, this cha in this chapter we are going to talk about the processes by means of which languages, languages, or human language, what add, what uh, add, what new vocabularies, new words. Here we are dealing with creating of words, creating of new words. 
and the how do these words come into language enter language okay right maybe at the beginning uh, maybe at the beginning we do not deal we do not accept a, a new word but later on with the passage of time now we start it, it becomes familiar we start dealing with it we start using it like this okay now after this introduction and I hope I have been clear not 100% clear but I feel that I have uh, give you an introduction I'm, uh, I'm just uh, what preparing you to what I am going to talk about okay right so um, let us start now with the first what the first word formation process uh, word, word formation with the first word formation process is yeah, out of the word formation process the first one the, the first uh, process uh, I will uh, uh, through which we will we will see how languages what or a language what increases what its vocabularies. Now, let us uh, start. Let us start with the first word formation processes. The first word formation process the first word formation process is this what is it baro baro is the opposite of lending baro means give give baro give uh, uh, baro give Okay, borrow, give, lend, opposite, the opposite, borrow means give, what is the opposite of borrow, lend, okay, yokrov, borrow, lending, yaktarov, zip. Now here, uh, I'd like to say something before uh, I start talking about this word formation process. Uh, here, I'd like to say something. What is it? Now, in borrowing, uh, as we know that when you borrow something from someone, you borrow money, for example, you borrow a book, you borrow a car, you have to return what you, uh, what you, what, <coughs> what you uh, take from, from, uh, someone when I borrowed your book I have to return your book when I borrow money from you I have to return the money to you in linguistics in linguistic uh, here in borrowing in uh, as a word formation process borrowing is not returnable you do not pay it back no you keep it this is a very interesting point so in uh, here in borrowing, when you borrow something, when you borrow a word, you do not return that word to that language from which you borrowed. Okay? You borrowed for, we borrowed the word as we will see now, what we have borrowed from English, what English has borrowed from Arabic, from any other language. Now, here, <clears throat> now, we, uh, uh, the language that borrows, uh, uh, the language that borrows, that gives a, a, a word to that borrowing language, borrowing language, and the language that borrows that takes that word, both both languages are going to what are going to use that word. They do not return it. This is a very interesting point here. But when you borrow material things, you borrow money, you borrow other things, a book, you borrow a car, you have to return it. But when a language borrows a word from another language, it does not return what that language to that language from which what it borrowed. This is a very interesting point I would, uh, uh, <clears throat> what I'd like to uh, start 
talking about what borrow. This is the first thing. The other thing is that when you borrow a word, sometimes you you borrow it. It means you take it as it is. Uh, you do some. Uh, phonological changes in the word in order to make it just like any other native word in the in your language you see the point yeah this is a very uh, this is also another point sometimes <clears throat> you do not do any changes in the word phonological changes sometimes you do some phonological changes why do we do these phonological changes in the word that you have borrowed from that language so that the, 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 the word that you have borrowed from that language would look like, would behave, would be like any other native word in the, in the, uh, in the, in the language that you have uh, borrowed into. Okay, now let me, uh, <coughs> uh, George Yule, George Yule has given us a number of words uh, <clears throat> you see, he, he is using the word take over, take over control. Yani he is going to control. Uh, yani, uh, that language is going to, uh, to, going to control that, uh, that word. تصبح عليه السيطرة عليه. Take over. Okay, control that word. Uh, let us see, for example. Now, English, English has borrowed. And there is, by the way, there is no shame. There is no shame in, 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 in borrowing. This is the feature, this is the characteristic of a living language. There is no shame. Into that a language borrows what and, uh, uh, from another language. There is no, there is no harm. There is no sh uh, shyness. Okay? Yeah. Uh, in this. Now, uh, for example, for example, uh, the word sofa, the word sofa, sofa, this is an Arabic word. Sofa is an Arabic word. It has been borrowed into what? Into English. So sofa, English, it is already taken from what? From Arabic. This is one, one thing. Okay? Number one, the synonym. Take, for example, the word piano. Piano, piano, and then here we have piano. So now the word piano is already, it is Italian. It was borrowed into what? Into English. <clears throat> right. What else? Uh, take, for example, the word zebra. Zebra. Here we have zebra. Okay, al hamar al washi. Also, we have a very interesting word that is o y o g u r t. Zebra from Bantu language. Yo uh, what about the word yogurt? Yogurt is taken from Turkish. Turkish. Turkish word yogurt. Here we have what y o g Either uh, Y O G U H U R T, I put it between parentheses, U R T. So, yogurt, zabadi means. Okay? So, these words, <coughs> uh, here, uh, uh, sofa from Arabic, uh, piano from Italian, zebra from Bantu, uh, yogurt from Turkish, into English, sofa, piano, zebra. Your yogurt, etc., etc. So see how English has increased its vocabularies. Huh? It's, it, it has increased its vocabulary. It has added new vocabularies into uh, 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 to its vocabularies to the words that it has. It. How does English uh, what created this word, added this word, new words, new logism? You remember? New logism, new word. How did English do this? English did this by the process called what? Borrowing. By the word, by the by this process. What is this process called? It is called what? 
borrowing. So now English has increased what its vocabularies. How does English has, uh, how, yeah, how does English have increased, or how did English, sorry, in, in increase what uh, its vocabularies by this process, which is called what borrowing. They have taken words from uh, what from another land. At the same time, or meanwhile, English has also not English. Okay, borrows, but English also at the same time it lends. It lends. It means it takes to other what. Uh, uh, it gives to what. It gives what to other what uh, languages. <clears throat> uh, for example, uh, now uh, the word. Um, here he says other languages, of course, borrow terms from English, from English, as in the Japanese use of this word, which means supermarket. The word supermarket, supermarket, it was borrowed from English into what? Into Japanese. Right. Okay, so we continue now. Now, uh, I said that the word supermarket is borrowed, uh, is borrowed from uh, English into Japanese. Another word, which is also English, gave to Japanese is the word typewriter. So now, see uh, how English earlier here, it is borrowing. Here it is what? No, English is a lender now. Here, it is a lender. Instead of being a borrower, it is a lender. So this is language, a living language. A living language is a language that borrows from other languages and it also lends to what? To other languages. In addition to these words, we find other words that have been uh, uh, taken from English that English lent uh, to other languages. The word sport, for example, sport, club. Also, for example, the word football, football, football. Now, these words, uh, English, uh, lent them to what? Which language? To Hungarian to Hungarian, to the language used in Hungary. Okay, right. So now, uh, I mean, you find more examples, of course, but what I want to say is that now, English, earlier we, we saw that English was lending from other languages, and these are languages that we started with, Arabic, Italian, Bantu, Zebra. Here, no, uh, language, uh, 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 what? English uh, English now is not borrowing. English is lending. It, it gives rather than what it takes. Okay? And by the way, I repeat myself perhaps, saying that now the word supermarket, uh, when it is borrowed in the Japanese, they are going to make some phonological changes. Also the word typewriter, phonological changes in Japanese. So that these words will look like any Japanese words. Also, the word sport, the word club, and the word what? Football, when they are borrowed, as I said, they are borrowed in Hungarian, language spoken in Hungary, okay? Now, uh, the point I repeat is that now here, the borrowing and the lending, now when an uh, English borrows a word from, uh, from Arabic, it's not going to return it. No, it keep, they, they keep it. Also, Arabic, uh, uh, English, when it lent or gave, what these words into uh, to Japanese and the, the, the Japanese uh, Japanese use these words. They are not going to return these words what to the uh, to the lending language to English. This is my point. This is what we mean uh, by what by uh, borrowing as the word for uh, as the first word formation process. Right now. Uh, Okay, now let's see what about the second what the second word formation what process.
Okay, now um, <clears throat> let's see the second word formation process. What is it called? It's called loan translation or calic. Now, uh, there is a relationship between borrowing and loan translation. Now, what's the connection between these two processes? The connection is, I want you, by the way, uh, to concentrate, to focus, or to realize the difference. There is a difference between these two processes. Here, uh, here there is borrowing, and here also there is a borrowing. Okay, no, Karov. The, the language what? Uh, lends from another language. But what's the difference? You see, here in borrowing, when we borrow a word, we do not trans, there is no translation. We borrow, we take the word, we do some phonological changes in that word in order to be like any other native of that, uh, into that borrowing language. But here, what is the point here? The point, the difference between loaded translation or calic and borrowing, that here we witness what we call translation, tarjana. And how, how? We borrow a word, we borrow a word, and then, or we borrow a term, we borrow an idiom, well then we, what do we do? We translate it into what? Into that borrowing language. Uh, here, there is no translation. Here, there is a translation. For example, for example, now, Yule says that, uh, now, uh, that the word, for example, uh, the word Superman in, in English, Superman. Superman. Rajal Khalq. Okay? Also, the word, uh, loan word. L O A N, Hadi, word, this. These words, Hadi, Superman, loan word, these words, they are already, they were already taken from what? From, they were taken, they were borrowed from, from what? From uh, uh, German. G E R M A N. This is what? This is English. English took what? Superman, which is written as what? Uh, Superman. Uh, <clears throat> Here you are. Okay, so now Superman, which is uh, now an English word and also the word loan word. Now these words are taken from German. Superman in uh, German is written like this, uh, like this, U-B-E-R, U-B-E-R, M-E-N, M-E-N, S-C-H, and then here this is this diacritic, this is one. What about loan word? Loan word is um, sorry. Now, what is the difference, you see, what is the difference between this process where we have loan translation or calic and borrowing? As I said, here we do not have any translation. Here we have phonological changes. Here we have Translation. Now, what sort of translation? Direct translation. Literal translation. Direct translation, let me say. Now, super, super, uh, Uber, Uber in German. What is the equivalent of Uber in English? Super. Okay. What is the, uh, what is, uh, the equivalent or the counterpart of the word mensch or mensch in in German, man. So now we translated Uber, we have super. Man, man. So we have a translation here. We borrowed this word and then we translated it. No, we, we didn't keep it as it is, as in borrowing. No, we are translated because we are, we have like these words in what? In English. Similarly, the word 
loan trans loan word شوف loan lehen lehen means loan we have uh, english has this word okay vert word they borrowed the, the they borrowed this compound word had the kelim murakkada huh into english okay so they lehen loan vert word see by the way there is uh, these two languages english and german are taken from uh, what we call germanic uh, germanic languages germanic language see the 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 the, uh, the similarity w o r t w o r d vert word lehen loan uber super okay right so now um uh, i repeat myself that here now we have added we have added the word superman into english and the word loan word into english also well, how did we add it we add them by borrowing the this term or this compound word and this compound word these two compounds words, we borrowed them but what did we we translated we give the equivalent of each of these words words that make the, 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 the these compound words we borrowed we borrowed them and then we translated them into what into english okay right now uh, uh, the last point uh, uh, in which uh, what i uh, i make a distinction or i uh, yeah I, uh, I said that now borrowing what is the difference now between borrowing and loan translation repeating myself here uh, you see uh, in uh, in learn it, uh, in sorry in borrowing we do some phonological changes in the word we 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 borrow the word we we do not translate it there is no translate the translation is here we borrow a, a word a, a term then we try to give the equivalent of that word into the borrowed language here uh, georgiou actually uh, says something very interesting uh, in which uh, uh, he sheds the light on the difference between what well, loan translation and borrowing. He said the American concept of boyfriend, so the American concept of whom of boyfriend a sadiq huh, was borrowed with sound change borrowed borrowed. Then then can you boyfriend in. Uh, in, in, in Japanese, it is what? It is, uh, it is borrowed. How do we know with sound change into Japanese? Okay. But as a calic into Chinese, male friend, nan, pinguan, or, or whatever it is. So this is a very interesting point. Uh, what is it that uh, um, the word boyfriend as a concept it is, uh, it is what it is borrowed from English boyfriend, borrowed, they borrowed. Okay, 